Did you know that they will give you an unlimited amount of beer? That is crazy. That is crazy. What, yeah. at Boulevard? Yeah. Wait, do you have to pay for the sample? Pay for what sample? The, the samples, the urine sample that they <laughs> the hand urine out. samples? No, the samples they give you at uh, the beer hall. I don't think that the normal public gets to have as much beer as we had. Do you realize as many times as we've been there at the beer hall, we have never once paid for a single beer? Ever. That's pretty <laughs> cool. I think we've been we? there like three, maybe four times. Really? It would be scary if we did have to. You weren't there, you were there for the one Boulevard interview we did yeah. before Boulevard Yeah. Oh, dang, you got a beer. That would be a mic. Oh, you got a Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, hey, before we get into the movie review of this amazing film, uh, at the top, I want to remind everyone to make sure to check us out on YouTube. Um, hey. hey. And girl. coincidentally, if you're listening to this on the podcast feed, we are recording this in this amazing venue. How would you guys describe? I don't know, man. How, how sick are my puppies on YouTube? How, how sick does that well, look? Well, I'm watching us live. Yeah, you're uh, yeah. And Josh, Josh's right arm is greatly exaggerated more than his left. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> it re- it's real life. Swear, swear the gym. Uh, make sure to check out the Can City Media YouTube channel. We posted a, a couple days ago our Boulevard tour with Joel mm. Nichols, and we've had a lot of really good response. It Basically, was very sensual. <laughs> just Joel. That was yeah, it. Just you and Joel. Just just Joel and hugging a, it out. A bed full of yeah. rose petals. <laughs> and in slow motion, too. Ever slow so motion. carefully draped. <laughs> Just so we could get the PG-13 rating. Little, little Very strategic <laughs> placement of the pedals. Tons of candles everywhere in the room. It was super sexy. All all right. hot wax. So, yeah, make sure to follow us on all the social media outlets at Can City Media and subscribe to uh, to the Can City Media YouTube channel along with this video. Uh, yeah, so we're on the podcast feed. You can watch the video of... Uh, this what we're actually recording right now on the YouTube channel as well. So at and our studio, yeah, known as Chili's. In Chili's. And if you're watching us on YouTube, hello, and thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching us. This episode is brought to you by Chili's. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into it. Gentlemen, what amazing film did we just see? Is it called Mortal Engines or Immortal Engines? Is it Mortal, Mortal Minions? <laughs> Schmortal Orange Schmengens. Minions? Yeah. <laughs> it was oh, basically God. Wild Wild West meets The Fifth Element. Meets, meets a Royal ter- Caribbean cruise ship. Meets a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. <laughs> meets uh, the wardrobe department from Sherlock Holmes, the Robert Downey du- Jr. version. Robert Robert, Robert Downey Jr. Du- du- <laughs> you got it, Robert Downey. <laughs> I've only had a sip. It's already having an effect. Oh, oh and Terminator and, and Terminator. Wow. Uh, the yes. Genesis one. The dialogue. This is based off a book, so though, right? I this have no idea. Is it? Yeah. Now, a with book the is that thing with writing in it. It's with words. Okay. Uh, that's uh, as far as I know. I wonder how good the book was. I would imagine it was probably terrible. Actually, you know what? If it, I assumed the way this was put together, I actually assumed it was based off a book. Because yeah. it's so... You, you can tell there's um, something missing. Like, it's based off... Yeah, the movie off didn't have that something, but... Most movies have. <laughs> it's called a script yeah. <laughs> and a plot. <laughs> it, it was missing something that other movies have. What's it called? Oh, a story. Oh, <laughs> something What's the good. Point? Well, that's that's, that's the thing. what I was asking two hours in. Yeah. The, the, point? the film starts as if, it, how I put it when I walked away from it, I thought this might make for a decent uh, TV series. It felt rushed and there was yeah. pieces missing. Things were not developed very well. And when it started, it started as if you were watching a television series and you were starting on episode four. Mm-hmm. Like there was something established beforehand that you were missing. I, And then it was just a disjointed mess from there on out. Well, and I was really impressed with it the first like 10, 15 minutes of the movie. Yeah. I was like, this is epic. This is going to be a really good movie. Kyle but was losing his mind. I was crying because it was so beautiful. <laughs> And I'm mentally deranged. <laughs> what an amazing art piece. But uh, no, it was really impressive. It was like, I thought, this is going to be something very unique. I was like, this is a social commentary. <laughs> I get it. Border walls. Build that wall. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, yeah, the Chinese are very nice people. That's what I learned from this. Delightful folk. And the British are... Buttholes. The Brit, the British are the worst. They're yeah. pretty much, uh, it's yeah. Been, it's been the same. Since you remember how, like, how the British they built like all those boats and took over. They people. did. And they put boats on wheels. They put they put boats on every island and took over. And what named. I don't understand is, 
Okay, they build this big city, but why do they have to like put it on uh, wheels? Because it's also, totally rad. And also, why do they have to chase? And what other have they been smaller... doing for all these decades? Do they have nothing better to do than just we? We're going I think so. Go for a joyride. So uh, why don't you guys? It's su- almost like I don't know what to say because it was such a bad movie. How how would you describe kind of the how would you the synopsis of this film? Uh, it takes it's supposed to take place in the future. Yeah, like I'm assuming in 1997, se- <laughs> <laughs> before Judgment Day. <laughs> how would you put it? Um, yeah, it's in the future. There's wheel tra- or tire tracks everywhere. Um, people are chasing each other just for sport. That's pretty much it. The end. I think yeah, that's it. it was. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> they were trying to assimilate the other. They're not Borg, okay? <laughs> Borg, basically they're Borg. So we're putting this in with Star Trek. Are you saying Resistance is, is futile? futile? <laughs> no, they they were. Capturing those other um, cities, yeah, and then they would take all the resources because he said at the very beginning he goes, "How much longer will be we be able to go?" And he's like, "Not much longer." And they're like, "Well, should we go after this little city here?" And he said, "Yeah, they got salt." He goes, "Well, that won't last us very long to keep them powered." They would assimilate all the because in the future engines are powered by salt, salt and pepper. Oh, yeah. Wow, <laughs> delicious engines! The They're savory. <laughs> Their city smelled amazing. <laughs> Mix it with oil. Forget about Everyone's it. Everyone's all so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I will try to sum this up. Basically, in the uh, like post-apocalyptic future, even from the the logo, you assume I thought it was like nuclear war or something like or most, nuclear war, nuclear war, and the yep. world. <laughs> The world is basically divided, or I guess, I'm assuming the European Asian continent is divided into you have mobile cities and then you have static stationary cities, and there's this division between the two, and they hate each other. Well, apparently, Why? I have no idea. Yeah, apparently Pangea has set back in, or something has yeah. happened to yeah. the continents because they have a map and they're like, we think this is what it used to look like in the year 2000. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and it was like, yeah, it was yeah, obvious that basically the countries, the nation states exist on these giant moving platforms. It was. Very weird. Cruise ships on water. Very like cruise ships, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, is there anything redeeming about this? The film? dance sequences that the cruise director <laughs> oh, had man. on that London. That would have been better. He was very flamboyant, when, but charming. <laughs> <laughs> but you got it. You just fell in love with him immediately. A total lady killer. <laughs> Speaking of falling in love with uh, the characters, did you feel or I don't know? No. Feel anything for any of the characters? Did anything excite you? <laughs> um, you know it was funny though when the the uh, the girl took the mascot or the bandana off yeah. her face or whatever the Phantom of the Opera, the Phantom mask, of the Opera, yeah. and they exposed that scar. Mm-hmm. It, the camera stayed on her for just a minute too long, like you were supposed to be shocked yeah. that she had a scar. Like it's wait like, till okay, you almost throw hideous. up in your mouth. She's so gross. I noticed that though in the, in the way it was cut. They introduce visually all these characters as if it's supposed to be a dramatic entrance and you're supposed to care who these people are. Yeah. Like her, uh, Hugo Weaving's character, the Matrix lady. Uh, she walked on the scene. She was immediately, I thought, in the wrong film. What Matrix lady? The, the, red, the lady. red lady with the sunglasses. The Asian woman? Uh, yeah. I'm, I just call her Matrix lady. Oh. she looked, I think her name was Fong. To me, she looked like a mixture of Yoko Ono and Kim Jong-un. Well, she, she was the only character wearing sunglasses, I think, in the whole entire film. So, yeah, because her future's so bright. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was weird because everybody else looked like they had been crawling through sewage, and then she shows up with literally like neo glasses. Like she just got out of the shower. Yeah. Her hair was clothes. like perfectly gelled up. She's Clocked. wearing like this cool, yeah, like red. I'm going to be a ninja, clearly. And then yeah. the way she's introduced visually, like I don't the know cra- why I got my arm around you, but the crowd, it's nice. <laughs> the crowd splits. She pops on the scene and everyone's like, ooh, and you're you're introduced to her as if you're supposed to know who she is. Yeah. And I could give to you know what. Well, remember how she was the girl that there, there was, was a, a, wanted, a poster. wanted poster mm-hmm. and they're like, "What?" And, and I actually see her. thought that was in reference to the girl who was trying to cover her face. Like I didn't get a clear oh. shot. I thought 
Well, I saw the red on the poster, and then the oh. bandana she's wearing is red, so I thought maybe that's who she was. God, I don't you're know. An idiot. I am pretty stupid. You know what I really <laughs> like? Stupid. This movie. <laughs> I really liked when he shoots down the bad guy, and he says, "You are history," <laughs> and then he shoots him down out of the sky. Yeah. You need to wear your hat to the side when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty rad. Not cliche at all. <laughs> I also liked when she sacrificed herself and fell down through the smoke. Like, an angel. like Jesus. <laughs> in slow motion. And whoosh, it was just so cliche. Yeah. The whole movie was a cliche <laughs> mess. <laughs> Kyle's cracking me up here. <laughs> it was really, uh, it was a lot of like cliche uh, cinematic tropes. Now, some movies are so bad that you can have fun with it. If you saw this a second time, would you be able to enjoy it? Knowing I, what, what if, I would want to do is to do a mystery Huff science glue theater first. Yeah. thing. Oh, yeah, Huff yeah, and glue. mystery science. That's what, yeah. Yes, I oh, would totally was, make fun of it. What, and like, I even turned to Ashley at this point. So the girl, she's recounting her story. She's laying down on her back, and she starts crying. Did you notice the tear goes from vertical from top to bottom? And she's laying down. I'm like, wouldn't it be going this way? Gravity still like residual gravity. It's like still. Maybe. Whatever. There's so many moments in this film that I just kept thinking in my head, what the bleep is going on? Yes, what yeah. in the bleep indeed? I, it like, was rough. It For was one, you, very you bad. You don't care about any of the characters. Mm -hmm. There's no story until roughly two thirds of the way through. I have, at the halfway point, I even looked at my watch. We were started at seven. We were, it was about eight o'clock. I yeah. I kept looking at my watch, and I'm going, it's we're ha we're literally halfway into this two hour movie. I don't know what the story is. I yeah. don't know where this is going. What is the end game that they're trying to do? What's the goal of these characters? Well, they put in this uh, like the second secondary villain that was more like a Terminator type <laughs> character. Terminator and, zombie. Yeah. Who added nothing much to the story. It really? No, you could have cut that whole... Maybe. Is maybe a, a little Robocop. Oh, right. Robot zombie. Robot zombie Terminator guy. <laughs> Robot and zombie Terminator. I like how at first you think he's a bad guy and then you feel it, bad for <laughs> him because his then, son died and he remembers. His <laughs> memories. But I thought they weren't allowed to remember. Once you became know. a robot, there's all this. But life finds a way. <laughs> That's the thing. There's like supposedly all this mythos surrounding this world, and they don't. It's a mile wide and an inch deep. They don't get but into any like of it. I feel like if you were to read the book and to see the it movie, you'd sense. be like, "Oh wow, that yeah, I remember that." Oh man, this movie does suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably true. Now, but, did did Peter Jackson write the book? It's a screenplay by. Yeah, and the, the credits it said he was like one of three people who did the screenplay. Oh, good oh, lord! Why are you? Uh, I just things wanted to get have those gone mics. downhill since Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I just wanted to get those sneezes he's, on he's mic. Really missing out on some things. Uh, yeah, that was it. Was definitely not better than Lord of the Rings. Uh, no, even the Hobbit films yeah. were. Even though those were stretched out supremely, they were way better than this film. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to the sequel, like Immortal <laughs> Engines no too. The Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Well, we, we can, uh, yeah, I, I don't think we have to delve too deep into this. The movie's terrible. It's, I it's awful. I highly recommend you do not see it. It's not even red box worthy. It is a terrible movie. If it's on TV. Play it on in the background. Yeah. That's about it. Um, There's kind of some interesting visuals, but that's about it. Out of 10 stars, I give it a three. I would say 99% of the film is, is uh, it's shot in front of a green screen. There's so mm. many shots where I'm watching this going, I can tell they were in a studio yeah. going, uh, pretend there's a big wheel going there by you. Don't there was up. one scene in particular that I was like, you could really tell that they redubbed the scene because the mouths did not quite match what they were Was it when speaking. they were plotting the attack? It might have been. It was the, the, the blonde girl and the... The other character, I forget what his name is, but he had no. I don't know. Tom, Tom is the only character's name I can remember. And he had no point. That's the thing that I, I noticed. There's no story arc. Yeah. For anybody. Well, I was telling you guys this earlier. If you watch movies like uh, Avatar, 
which for some reason James Cameron's making seven sequels in a row. Because mm-hmm. we need them. Yeah, we need Can't them. Can't wait. Uh, but at least the first Avatar, you cared about the story. Yeah. You cared about the characters. Yeah. And you were hoping things would end well by the end of the film. This movie, I just kept thinking, what? And also, when is this going to get done? And it's also, like, it just drives. Huh? And also, <laughs> <laughs> when can we go to Chili's? I did really like the part where Tom from Tom and Jerry dances with Gene <laughs> Kelly in real life. You were watching that on your phone. Uh, that was not part of the film. I was in the bathroom and they were showing it on this tiny little screen. <laughs> they started dancing on the ceiling and like in that Lionel Richie music video. Was your bathroom rotating too? <laughs> did you guys wake up in the urinal? <laughs> Just me? Yeah, uh, urinal cakes are delicious. Mm. Mm. If, if you have some sort of fix for wasting money and seeing terrible films, definitely go see it. I would. I even think if you're into like steampunk type stuff, I it wouldn't even be worth it. But and except Ashley wants. In to the see audience's it. defense, there was about five people that were like. <laughs> yeah, the people person clapped. in front of us was like like losing their mind. They were losing their mind by, by a third of the way through because. You know, in your own head, you get to a certain point, you're like, oh, this is a terrible movie. Oh, but yeah. you don't know if everyone else thinks that. And then once I start hearing Kyle and Ashley laughing at it, I'm like, oh, I feel better. Oh, even <laughs> the idiots think it's terrible. <laughs> well, you have, aff- you have external affirmation that, oh, they think it's terrible. Someone too. else thinks it's is dumb. Is it just me? Is this really good and I can't tell? Am I not smart enough to wrap my head I around I thought the same thing. Remember at Dunkirk, after oh, we saw yeah. Dunkirk, by, by the time the credits roll, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, well, this was a Christopher Nolan film. He's right. a renowned director. I'm going, oh God, I hope, was I the only one who thought this was well, a terrible film? Apparently the three of us were the only people who thought it was terrible. Well, no, no, no. I think the three of us were the only ones that were telling the truth about yeah. how the film actually was. And then we watched that other review and that guy mirrored our review mm-hmm. almost yeah. identically. So Jeremy like, John. Yeah. yeah, it's like some people, uh, you know, some people just, they just lie to the media because it's People Better, be lying. Yeah, you know? But not us. We speak the truth. <laughs> yeah, straight up. The truth. <laughs> so you said three out of ten? <laughs> three out of ten stars. I'd say, yeah, about two out of ten. I was going to say four, yeah. just because, I don't know, for the numbers sake. Just to be nice. Because <laughs> boobs. Boobs on the film. Not one single boob. Oh, yeah, there was zero boob. <laughs> yeah, especially that Asian woman. I was shocked. When she took off her coat and she was wearing like a chainmail shirt, oh, yeah. I'm like, is that a dude or is that a girl? Like, I didn't know. Does it matter? It, to me, yeah. And this oh. was rated. I need to P- say them. This no. was rated PG 13, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. There wasn't. Uh, no, it could have been, cus- been G. <laughs> <laughs> it was for kids. It's for, except for the one scene where the Asian Cinderella. lady <laughs> goes berserk on everyone and just starts slicing and dicing them up. But even that, it's. It's PG-13 violence on that one that scene. Towards the end of the film, when they get to that that city, um, she comes in and she's talking to, like, I want to say the president of the city. Uh-huh. And when the they governor. Get, the, oh, sorry, the governor of the city. Um, but when they start going to battle, the governor got, the guy, he's not given the orders. It's the Asian woman. Yeah. And it's like, well, who are you? I, I, she's just a commoner. As far I as I know, she's just a regular civilian. Okay. She's what? Fane? Is that her name? Her name was Fane. Really? See, uh, oh, wild f- windflower. Yeah, it was Wong. Windflower. Fart flower. Fart flower. <laughs> Aside from Tom, I knew, I remember. It's spelled Fane. The, even the, ro- <laughs> even the uh, uh, robot zombie Terminator guy, who was after What's Your Name, he yeah. said the name of that character, and I thought, who's he going after? What was his name? What Esther was his Shaw? name again? Shrimp Taco? Shri- his Esther, shrimp Taco. Esther Taco. Es- Strike. I thought it was. I thought they were saying Shrek. Yeah, Shrek. That's that what sounded it sounded like, like Shrek. Um, also, when he found out that the girl with the scar was in love, oh, he my just God. died. <laughs> like just, his character ceased to exist. That yeah. is this. Oh. That's my. He bad. just like he just like Thank looked you. at his chest and it was like sparkling. That is what. That is the moment the film lost me. Like completely. But the the moment, like three minutes in, when mm. there's reference to minions, mm. I thought, oh, it's going to be that kind of movie. Up to the point where the guy's like, you are in love. <laughs> I'm like, I'm out. Do you have silverware? I checked out. Oh, can I get a... Oh, there we go. You got it? Okay, never mind. She already oh, walked away. All right. What? <laughs> oh, wow, me. is that a fart? 
As a burp. Yes, yeah, I liked fart. how when he realized that she was in love and started malfunctioning himself to death. <laughs> I well, liked also. I liked how they started playing Huey Lewis. That's the power of love. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what was crazy? Okay, so the Terminator guy raised the girl with the scar. He raised her. Yeah. Now he's trying to kill her because she didn't keep his promise, like brutally killing people. And once he is starting to malfunction and die, she is losing her mind. Like she, she starts is, crying. She starts crying. I'm like, like I'm he wanted you. to kill you. Mm -hmm. That's Stockholm syndrome. Like two seconds ago, he wanted you dead. That's what I'm saying. This this movie makes no freaking you guys, sense. You guys just don't have terrible fathers. You don't understand. <laughs> that was Kyle the only scene you related to. You're like, I, I too had a robot zombie terminator Kyle's father. watching it, and his bottom lip is quivering. <laughs> My terrible dad is dying. <laughs> All right, let's end this abomination of a review. If you're watching us on YouTube, thank you very much for watching us. If you're listening to us on the podcast feed, thank you for subscribing to the podcast feed. Anything else? Any other notes or things nope. we need to end on? No. Mm -mm. Okay, yeah. Make sure to Don't subscribe to it. on YouTube. Uh, follow us on all those social media outlets. Everything is Can City Media. We'll catch you on the next one, everyone. Bye. Bye.